will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning. All right, welcome to another episode, Liberating Truths. All right. And so people, as you may see, as you have seen on the Facebook world, I mean, not Facebook, YouTube world, that a lot of things have been happening. Regarding um, Stephen Lawson, the news is uh, progressed as we expected. We kind of know that, you know what, um, this was not a huge thing. And um, we're not so surprised at the conclusion that it had been a five-year relationship, romantic relationship. We don't know the details, only to say that it... Um, never progress it seems to uh, literal physical encounters let's just say that uh, but even that is still to some degree not um, 100% certain now you know what uh, this this kind of um, brought up some other issues I believe that I was sharing a thought of my pastor friend that we should, of course, live in holiness and walk in righteousness and reflect the glory of Jesus in what we do. Also, I believe that it is it's also important, not only that we um teach people teach ourselves not to fall but how do we treat people when they fall i think also that is a a strong weakness for the church right you want people to look at um at, at the community of the king and you want people to say yeah i would like to be part of that fellowship look how they treat each other look how they forgive each other um look how they um have compassion and mercy on each other. And, um, you know, um, they're not compromising of sin, yet they are compassionate, right? We would want people to have that, um, that, that attitude because that is the attitude of Christ, right? And so I want to talk about several things. I hope I can pack it all in here. The first thing, one of the things I want to talk about is, um, uh, well, let me see how should I put it. First, I want to talk about Steve Lawson's, um, from the thumbnail, you see the thumbnail is Steve Lawson and Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is where the law, um, the children of Israel received the law from. I believe that Steve Lawson's Lordship Salvation Theology. Uh, you know what? Uh, it didn't start it off like that, by the way. Not to say this is 100% um, accurate in the sense I know what he, his heart is, but you could say that he started off by grace because he started off... Um, he started off... Sorry about that. He started off in his own testimony. He started off... Um, when he heard um, Adrian Rogers, who is a, a profound um, preacher of God's grace. And then he shifted off into um, Calvinism. And I believe that it is where he pick up or he start to, 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 to preach a lot of the legalistic, um, in a legalistic way. And... Um, I believe that at the end, this is one of his, the major thing that uh, um, affected him. And I'm going to show you that. Just keep on. Now, I am not saying also that every Calvinistic, because that, that would not be so, P, uh, um, Calvinistic pastor or believer who believe in a more reform kind of thinking that is, um, they're all legalistic. I, I would not say that. Um, but it can tend to lead to a kind of legalistic kind of um, um, thinking. So I want to talk a little about addressing that, and at the same time addressing another problem that I see. 
Now, you know, since this has been, uh, has happened, one of the things I also see is the response. And I was watching a YouTube channel, Right Response Ministries. I don't remember the, the, the gentleman's name. But Right Response Ministries. Uh, and, and my last video, my, my, well, my video on this topic um, that I posted a couple of days ago, and it just happened, I spoke about a response from, was it John Harris? Um, I did find a video that John Harris made. Um, he started to form a narrative around the reason he believed that Steve Lawson fell. And his point was that he fell because he was not at the forefront of the cultural war with John MacArthur. And I, I, I scripturally, I, he's way off. But the thing is, and, and this is where, you, you, if you ever watch um, political debates, one of the things that you will see is after the debate, um, people go, they call it the spin room. The spin room where they will try to lead the narrative in saying who win and their candidate had a stronger upper hand and they will spin the thing. Um, it, it's, it's kind of dishonest, but they would spin it to, to their advantage or their political party's advantage. And I think that there is some spinning going on here when it comes to the fall of Steve Lawson. I believe that there is some in the reform way of thinking that is trying to spin the narrative. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about this larger problem of why does this keep happening? Uh, there's yeah. a lot of guys who have continued to fall. Uh, we've got some thoughts on the matter. I do believe there are some direct correlations, and some of them will surprise you. Uh, I'll just lead off with this uh, to kind of hook you and keep you t uh, stay, you know, uh, uh, keep you tuned in. Um, I, I do think uh, John Harris talked about this, and so I want to give him credit. I think he did a good job uh, with this particular insight. Uh, but I do believe there is a direct correlation between um, cowardice yeah. and uh, a lack of character. Or to say it the other way, uh, character and courage go hand in hand. And when courage is absent, um, it doesn't definitively prove, uh, but it does leave room to at least question when, when, uh, when um, courage is absent to cause room to question, is there uh, perhaps also character that is lacking as well? Um, I'll just be honest, uh, the correlation between cowards with COVID and mm -hmm. uh, and moral failures yeah. remains undefeated. Because those formulas that we had for explaining why this stuff happens in other camps, they the scripture and studying it and knowing it and communicating it was supposed to be like the 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 main and the big barrier. All right, and I think the scripture is important in this regard, uh, but. I, I want you to see by the end of this that there's there, there's more to it than that. That's it, it can't just be that someone's a good expositor and that will necessarily mean they're virtuous in every sense of the word or they're strong uh, in every sense of the word. Um, I, I hope to somewhat dispel that notion, but that's the question I think running through a lot of people's mind. And they don't want to look on the the, the doctrine that helped him to lead him to that position. Right. And I am not saying that um, it is, uh, you know, only, of course, we know that people fall in different ways, but you have to look at the scripture. Right. You have to look at the scripture squarely because that's where the answer is. Right. You can't assume things and you can't just throw a scripture there and um, make up a narrative about why you think it happened. The Bible says that the scripture is there for our learning. His divine power has given us everything for life and godliness and through the knowledge of him. So when, when someone falls, if I fell, if I fall, there is a reason for me falling. Right? There is a reason for me falling. And it's not the reason that I can just make up or assume the scripture is clear why we fall. All right, there's some things that we're lacking. There's some things that we are not believing, first of all. 
And it's, first of all, it's not something that we're not doing. Let me say that again. First of all, it's not something that we're not doing. It is something that we're not believing. All right? Our fall, why Christian fall? And uh, by the way, uh, maybe, I'll put, maybe I'll put the video here, but Right Response Ministries, um, their topic was uh, the reason why men fall, the reason why men fall. And the reason they gave, I, I couldn't watch all of the video because it was, to me, just off base. But the reason they gave was that um, Steve Lawson wasn't, wasn't, wasn't what he was not believing, essentially. It was what he was not doing. And he was not um, brave. He was not fighting uh, the, the, the cultural war. And, and they could see it. And, um, you know, it's very disturbing. Disturbing what happened to Steve Lawson. But also very disturbing the reaction from, from especially these two channels, Right Response Ministries and John Harris, I think, because he's the first one who started to, to, um, to, 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 to make up that narrative that he was not like David. All right, and, and they're gonna, you know, I've, <laughs> I've seen people where they say that, okay, um, we're not like David, but they're saying that he was not like David in, uh, um, or he was like David rather, he was like David um, when he um, did not go to war. We in the Old Testament, are no new, are there any New Testament scriptures to, to back up the saying, but anyway, and so that is one of the things I want to talk about. Why, do, why, why did um, Stephen Lawson fail? And why do men fail or women fail? Why do we fall? What's the reason? Well, you don't have to look far because it's, it's in the scripture. And you don't have to go and read a Puritan. And I'm not saying that Puritan writing is not holy and, I mean, um, scriptural. I'm just saying, you don't have to dig deep. You can look in the Word of God. All right? You don't have to. It's clear there in the Word. So let's look at the Word, right? And so um, the Bible talks about the works of the flesh, right? Amen? Yeah, you have heard it, right? The works of the flesh. And the Scripture says in Galatians, it says... Um, this I say then, that's Galatians 5 verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right? And so we know that when we sin, right, we are not what? Walking according to the Spirit. All right? And so we have to understand now and break it down. What does it mean to walk in the Spirit? And... Um, the mindset that we have, all right? Now, one of the things with uh, Lordship Theology, Free Grace Theology, those who believe, I believe in free grace. And when I say I believe in free grace, I believe that grace, the, the cost of my salvation was what Jesus did. And Jesus died for me and Jesus paid for my full salvation and I believe in him and I have eternal life and there is nothing else I, I can do to maintain eternal life or to gain eternal life. It is a gift that is offered to me and because I have that gift who is actually Jesus Christ himself, my life has been changed not by my effort or my will but because Jesus changed me when I received the gift of salvation. And he has made unto me wisdom, righteousness, holiness, and sanctification. And I'm not trying to prove anything because I am at rest and I'm at peace and I'm secure because I'm in Christ. I'm not trying to persevere. I'm not trying to 
do I, what I'm saying. I'm not trying to do anything out of flesh. I just have a relationship with Christ. He delivered me from my sin and delivered me um, from myself. And he, I receive him. All right. No, I'm not. I'm not trying to put on anything because Christ is my life and my righteousness. All right. So that is my understanding of of salvation in a nutshell. So it's free grace. It's free grace. Um, I don't have to make Jesus Lord because he is Lord and I acknowledge him as Lord because he saved me. <laughs> He's God. And every believer believes that. So I'd have to, I don't have to do any work to make him Lord. And the Lordship angle is all messed up. And I think that, um, personally, I think that um, that kind of understanding from the Bible. Because what I believe that Lordship theology is based mostly um, um, before the cross in the Gospels. And so they do not see um, salvation through the lens of the epistles, through Paul's writings. They see um, salvation like something that you have to do something for even though they may say otherwise. They always want to attach something to the completeness of what Jesus has done. All right, and that cause, that is a big problem in your uh, living the Christian life. It's going to hamper your um, sanctification and, and your life. It's the Galatian arrow, right? You know, you receive Jesus, free grace, but then you, you need to add something to it. That is the problem. So Paul says in Galatians 5.16, Walk in the Spirit. Uh, and, 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 and Colossians also say this, So ye receive Christ, also walk ye in, in him. For the flesh lost it against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. You are not trying to prove anything. You are not trying to, by your own effort, trying to complete anything that Jesus did. It is all done. Now the works of the flesh, because now you have a mindset of performance, are manifest, which are these, adultery. So to, to right response ministries, the reason why men fell and, and people fall and we fall is because of uh, a belief that we have that we can perform it is coming from your theology it's coming from your thinking that is why ideas of consequences right how you think about the christian life will result in how you live the christian life so i agree with sound teaching so it says that um these things manifest Adultery manifests. Why? Because it's a work of the flesh. And it's come because of a mindset from being under the law. The answer is right there. You understand? The answer is right there. So this idea, this thought of, oh, you're not out there fighting against the cultural, uh, the, 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 the demonic influences. You're not out there fighting the forefront. That is makeup. Yeah, let me put it nicely. That is just makeup. That is the spin room. That is not scripture and actually are leading people away. You try to, you, 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 you teach people how to live godly. We all need that, right? But after people have fallen, we need to look, you know, I always made this, this analogy about reading the word of God, right? And if you are reformed, if you are thinking strictly, you would go to the word and you would look for the answer in the word. You're told to tell charismatic, you're, you, you know, you preach against um, people coming up with different philosophies and pe um, um, people coming up with uh, uh, um, ad uh, additional um, scriptural, not, not scripture, but adding to the word of God. You know, in the reformed community, 
you know what is done is that you teach people not to come up with these imagination or what they they, 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 they think the word of God is, but to stick with the word of God. So stick with the word of God now. Go to the word of God. All right? Don't try to make up some narrative, some things that you do not have sufficient scripture um, to stand on and say, this is the reason why Steve Lawson fell. No, the, Paul says this is the reason why we all fall. It is because of walking according to the flesh. Right? And walking according to the flesh, right, comes from our pride or what we want to do or uh, some form of law keeping, a law mindset. So this Paul wasn't talking about the Galatians alone, right? He was talking to the humanity. This is why we fall. So now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. Fornication, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, right? Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, strife, sedition, heresy. So all of these things, because basically there are two kind of people in the world, right? The people of grace and people of the law. Whatever religion that we have is law-based, right? Performance in order to meet God's standard. Are you going to receive everything from Greece? Those are there too. And then there's, of course, in between in Galatians, you could say people want to mix law with grace. And I believe that is where Steve Lawson was. And uh, every believer to some point or to some degree have grown um, to see that uh, are tempted at some point to go back under the law, to think that way. And we usually... Um, fall into these kind of sins to some degree it is always the same principle why we go astray we are trying to perform and uh, trying to do work and then that is where the flesh comes in uh, let's read on so it says listen the, um, and he says what i say they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. That's when you rest, right? That's when you accept the free grace of God, right? Salvation is a free gift that God gives us through His Son. It costs Jesus His blood, right? It costs God a lot, but it's free to us and we receive it and we don't add to it and because the Bible says that a Paul pronounce a curse on those and, and, and the curse, the essence of that curse is that the spirit stop working in your life when you want to perform in order to be accepted by God. And if the spirit stop working in your life in the sense of, of um, producing the fruit of the spirit, you're going to incur. These things are going to follow your life. Right, because the spirit is not going to help you to keep the law in order for you to boast before God. The spirit lives in us, and, and, and we do do good works, right? Uh, we do honor the Lord, but it does not have anything to do with our performance, right? And so that is the principle, right? universal principle because it's god's word why people fall it's not this makeup thing that these two channels are are saying and i know no matter what degree no matter how many books no matter how you know and, and, and one of the the works of the flesh is um idolatry right you know and we must be careful you know because i think that in in the reform tradition and there are many great things in the reformed tradition might i say all right um we can have this tendency to to put men or to have respect of person to a certain degree that we do not see the word of god or we ought to see the word of god because people are in the way you know people are in the way and um, when I say people are in the way, 
you may see this word, reading the word of God. <laughs> the word of God says, this is the truth. They say, well, Dr. So-and-so disagree with this interpretation. So, you know, and um, you are like a bully into a position of rejecting the word of God. No wonder Paul and uh, Paul says, you know, you know, um, a, a, a few times in his writing that, you know, whatever they were made no difference to me. <laughs> right? If you go to James, or James was like um, one of the apostles. And um, Paul says, look, I, I don't care about a, a person. Because if you start to care about what people think, you're not going to be sown in your theology. Or could say care too much about what people think. Or what group you want to be in. You're not going to be sound because you're going to be thinking about, okay, what this person says, what, the, what this, um, I'm going against uh, John MacArthur. I mean, he didn't interpret, it, interpret this way. I'm going against this person. I'm just using John MacArthur as an example, but I'm going against R.C. Sproul. I'm, a, I'm going against Augustine and I'm, oh, but the scripture, you know, the Holy Spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit says, no, that can't be right. But no, 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 I can't. Um, these men, they're, they're old and they are so high in our minds that you can, you know, just want to follow the tradition and, and not look at the word, and that's a problem. But when you look at the word of God, it brings freedom and liberty. And I am saying that the scripture says this, that that's the reason why people fall. You don't have to look further. You don't have to go get you no know, Puritan book. I'm not saying you should not read the Puritans, but I'm just saying as um, you would agree that the scripture gives us everything for life and godliness, right? Now, you look at uh, Hebrews here. Hebrews says this about um, which mountain you come from, speaking of um, Stephen Lawson. Because the thing, you know, um, <sighs> In listening a few sermons from Stephen Lawson, right, you would think, you would think that with such, um, I've heard reports, by the way, of him, he said he preached some sermons, a series on being born again, you must be born again. I know the, 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 the church, one of the church that he ministered into how he was harping on the truth or the fact that you must be born again. And he was talking about um, Lordship salvation, how you must make Jesus your Lord. And there was one instant where a deacon says, you know, if this is what being a Christian is, I'm not saved um, because of the, 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 the fear that came over that congregation. They trembled and... Um, Dr. Lawson um, said that, uh, you know, people would come to him in, 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 in asking, what must I do to be saved, you know, because they were so overtaken. And, 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 um, and, and so you would, when you hear such things, you would say, wow, man, that's the Holy Spirit moving. That's the Holy Spirit moving people in fear and dread. You know, some of the uh, reformers or, or, or reformer, um, reformed mind thinking people, um, when they listen to a Paul washer and they listen to even <laughs> Dr. Lawson before he fell, you know, that no, they don't listen to him. But uh, are other preachers like that, they would say, wow, um, you know, they lay down the law, you have, you have, you have, you have preached the gospel because you have, you, you have, you have warned them about God's wrath and God's fire. And, um, and so, you know, you have terrified them. And that was a powerful sermon. You know, and, um, but, but then you say, what does the scripture say? Right? What does the scripture say? Because you go and preach hell and brimstone and fire and, oh, you must make Jesus your Lord or, and, uh, and so on, and people are afraid, naturally, because that's a heavy thing. Um, what is the place of preaching like that in a sermon? 
Because I believe that, of course, you have to let people know the dangers of rejecting Christ. Um, but, you know, fear is... Uh, it, it, the scripture talk about hell. The scripture strongly talk about um, separation from God and and the wrath of God, right? But you must understand that the scripture, uh, um, those truths, right, can only um, get people's attention. Listen to me now. Those truths can only get people attention they can change people they can get people attention to look to the one who saved them and that was that the law was meant to do the law was meant to bring it to a place where you see the holiness uh, of god but then turn to the cross then turn to the lord and 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 and, and trust him for your salvation that is what the law was made to do but i believe that um what some of these um, preachers have done is make that everything. And so when people, they don't know how to give people the grace that is needed because they haven't, to a certain degree, received that grace. Because listen now, with such strong preaching, why did not that preaching affect Stephen Lawson's life? If he, if he makes so many people tremble under fear and dread of hell and destruction and uh, for rejecting Jesus or for not, uh, actually not for rejecting Jesus alone, but for not fully um, making Jesus Lord. When the scripture said, believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. It's okay, God loves you. Just believe on the Lord and everything is good. But no, you have to do um, a lot of works, you know, you come to the gate of believing. If you don't cry, that, you know, and, and that is just way off. But Hebrews says, Hebrews 12 says that um, you have come to a mount. This is the mount you have come to. You see, grace is such a wonderful. Hebrews 12 verse 18 says, For you have not come to a mountain that might be touched, right and burn with fire to blackness darkness storm the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words with those who heard it begged that no one more word should be spoken to them for they could not stand what was commanded if any animal touched the mountain it should be stoned so the writer of the Hebrews are referencing to the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. He says, listen, church, this is not the mountain you have come to. You are not come to a mountain where you are going to be led by fear to serve God. Listen, in verse 22 it says, but you have come to Mount Zion. You have come now to Mount Zion. That means you have come to Calvary, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable multitude of angels you have come to innumerable multitude of angels to the festival gathering and assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven you have come to god the judge of all to the spirit of just men made perfect and you have come to jesus the mediator of a new covenant wow and so you must be careful what mountain are you allowing people to preach to you to what are they leading you to? Are they leading you to doubt your salvation because you need to do more? You need to make Jesus your Lord. You need to, you need to do something else. Are they leading you to rest in your salvation that the Lord has saved and delivered you because you believe in him? You know, the, um, John Wright, you know, this is, I want you to, to know that you have eternal life if you believe in Jesus Christ. But you have some people out there are trying to make you doubt the eternal life that you have by adding works to what God has done. That is dangerous. That is dangerous. That is, they are saying, okay, Jesus, the word of God says, if you believe on him, you have eternal life. And they're saying, no, you have to add some things. And that is what Galatians was strongly against. And it was through Galatians that Martin Luther came to the place of 
rest in Jesus, right? And so I say in closing, right? I say in closing this, my friend, if you are, if you are uh, confused, because this is what usually bring confusion in the body. It's adding works to your salvation has brought a lot of confusion to people who are, uh, who are simply, they have received Jesus and they're at rest. And then they hear some teaching that tells them that they need to do something. Oh, you think you are saved. Oh, you think, I don't believe you are saved because you're not doing, you're not doing enough. And they pile it on and then they trouble you. So Paul says, let no man trouble you. Okay. Rest in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that you have been saved because you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. Keep on believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ and let no man trouble you. This is Liberating Truth. Thank you so much for subscribing, like, share, comment, and God bless you. Thank you.